Cybersecurity in 2025 is like living in a digital zombie apocalypse. Everywhere you turn, someone, something sinister is waiting, lurking. Ransomware, zero day exploits popping up left and right, and the never ending phishing emails have long since evolved from promising riches from rich Nigerian princes. Although those still probably go out, evolved to some very convincing invoices, or Bob from accounting has shared a document with you, Sharon, and it's urgent. Click it or you're fired. We've all been there. But imagine this. Instead of constantly reacting to threats as they pop up, playing the cyber equivalent of whack-a-mole, what if you could proactively prevents the threats. Enter zero trust security, essentially putting your network and your systems and business stuff into maximum security lockdown 24 seven. So in this video, we're diving into Threat Locker, your ultimate zombie proof bunker in the cyber apocalypse that we're all stuck in now. Whether you're someone who's wanting to get into cybersecurity, an active security analyst, a penetration tester, a CISO, what have you, you need to understand zero trust and why you should probably put in some zero trust controls. This isn't a gimmick. This is, in my opinion, the only way that we're going to combat AI hacking and all the advanced zero day exploits that we're seeing. And maybe you'll understand why it's important by the end of the video. Let's get philosophical for a second. Trust is great in relationships, in friendships, with your coffee barista. Nobody wants anything extra in their coffee, just milk, sugar, and a tiny bit of coffee. But trust in cybersecurity, in our computers, servers, networks, that is the Achilles heel of our security infrastructure. Since the dawn of the first computer, security was essentially, if you're in my network, come on in, take all my cookies, stay a while, won't you? And that's exactly how ransomware ends up encrypting your server and demanding Bitcoin. Bitcoin ain't cheap these days, folks. Zero trust flips this completely. It makes the assumption that everyone, everything, is a potentially stinky doo-doo face, a threat, until proven otherwise. It's not paranoia, it's just being real. Now, the problem with implementing zero trust, a concept where you block everything and only allow what is expected, is how can you do this and still allow people to do their job? do what they need to on their computers, servers, networks, without having to request multiple times a day access to anything. ThreatLocker took this pain point in implementation and has made zero trust easily doable, allowing you, yes, you, Joe Schmo at Schmo Incorporated to implement strict policy-driven controls, making sure nothing runs without explicit approval. So. Why ThreatLocker specifically? Well, I've partnered with ThreatLocker because, to be frank, it is the only zero trust application control I've seen on the market that actually works, but more importantly, is easy to implement. Not only do other security controls suck to implement, you run the risk of bricking entire systems. I'm talking, it won't boot, completely bricking Computers. App Locker? Sure. You could spend months wrestling with configuration files, fine tuning the whitelist to ensure every process in an application is approved so that random tax software that accounting has been using for over a decade still works. I'm going to stop you right there. It's not worth it. You'll probably burn yourself out, as if to say you're not already burnt out working in cybersecurity. Threat Locker has made it their mission to make this as easy as painless, and most importantly, with as much control as possible over applications. Making your cybersecurity posture pretty bad. proactive for once, instead of adding another reactive control that attempts to stop things after the fact. Here's how and what Threat Locker does. In case all of you beginners are wondering, these are the pain points you get to look forward to when attempting to defend or break into if you work in offensive security. Pay attention. Here we have ThreatLocker's bread and butter, application allow listing. Imagine your pewter is a member of an exclusive club and ThreatLocker is the bouncer. If you're not explicitly on the VIP list, you're not getting in. This means no more random executables slipping through the cracks. Garl from accounting can download whatever he wants. We have a whitelist baseline of approved applications and that's it. No soup for you, Carl. 
With application allow listing, Threadlocker got fancy with a thing called ring fencing. Ever heard of the phrase, stay in your lane? That's exactly what Threadlocker ring fencing does for your apps. Applications are allowed to run, but not allowed to interact with stuff, files, registry keys, the internet, stuff they're not supposed to touch, unless explicitly permitted by the security department overlords. Think of it as digital social distancing between apps to prevent malicious lateral movement. No more DLL hijacking or process hollowing. Nada. Now, this is pretty straightforward. The method in which the whitelist is generated is through a learning period. This is probably the biggest hurdle in zero trust implementation for any security tool. Now, during the learning phase, after you deploy the threat locker agent to an endpoint, it can be a couple weeks, a month, however long you need to sort out all the denies in the unified audit. So once the agent is deployed on an endpoint, Threat Locker gets to work, logging everything, every process, every network connection, every file accessed, everything an application tries to access while it's running, thereby establishing a baseline. Once the baseline is made after the learning phase, it's just a matter of cleanup fine tuning. Luckily, this is also streamlined. If anything gets blocked while an application is running, and it's something that should have been whitelisted during the learning phase, it's just a simple click of a button. The request gets added to the response center where admins can go to review and approve. One of the biggest pain points in zero trust implementation is dealing with updates. I'm looking at you, App Blocker. With other application control products, dealing with updates is tedious. You have to modify configuration files, you accidentally fat finger a character, some Thing bricks, it sucks. But with Threat Locker, they have a list of over 10,000 built in applications that get definition updates 24 7. So the app control policies automatically get updated, meaning all those updates won't get blocked. Your IT and security team don't have to do anything. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, over time, as you can imagine, these requests will go down to nearly zero. At that point, you will have achieved zero trust. They have the cyber heroes approval, meaning they can have dedicated people that will go in and review these requests for you, making it even easier to deal with the early stages of implementation. Now, Threat Locker started with application control, but it has naturally expanded its features and functionality. Patch management. The struggle of keeping software up to date is real. If you don't have something installed on every endpoint that can handle updates for not only operating systems, but all the third party software that people use, you're opening yourself up to some major RCEs, remote code execution vulnerabilities that pop up left and right in all kinds of software. Now, obviously there's a ton of patch management tools out there, but have it wrapped up into the threat locker agent is pretty convenient. Elevation control, admin rights, bad, <laughs> very bad. Stop it. Get some help. Local admin for everyone? No, shame on you. Now, sadly, this is still so prevalent. Imagine someone downloads some skunky grayware, possibly a Trojan, and they have local admin rights. So when they go to install it, guess what? Since they have local admin rights, that installation can now access everything. You might be thinking, why would any organization do this and give admin rights to everyone locally? Because there is software that requires local admin rights to run possibly every single time it's used or during updates or during the initial installation. IT teams are already overworked as it is with endless demands, password resets to deal with. They don't want to have to deal with remoting onto a device just to put in admin creds for an update. That is entirely unreasonable. Well. Threat Locker has a solution for that. You can put in policies that approve updates and initial installation for applications that specifically need to be run as admin. This does not give the user who put in the request elevated permissions. No, just the application gets elevated permissions. Now keep in mind, the application is still locked down to do what is expected in the initial baseline. You have full granular control of local admin permissions, just enough access for every application. Network control. 
who's talking to whom on your network. This is more or less a host-based firewall that allows you to control network traffic on every endpoint. Maybe just a handful of endpoints need certain ports or IPs whitelisted, but not the others. You can put them in a group, apply a policy, while still locking down every other device. Storage control, USB sticks, innocent flash drives, or evil data exfiltrators. Threat Locker lets you control exactly what devices can connect and what they have access to. This puts a stop to unauthorized data transfers and the largely overlooked insider threats. The level of granular control here is wild. Read versus write permissions, what file paths you can access. This removes the fear of somebody randomly plugging in a USB drive that they found on the ground in the front of the office and plugged it in because they were curious of what was on it. The beauty of default deny is now you can allow only your backup program to access the backup directory while denying access to all users. If you wanna get crazy granular, you can even lock down file types, something like only permitting access to JPEGs from a camera. This is especially helpful from preventing anything but your browser, like malware or anything else, from accessing, oh, I don't know, the cookie location? Um, um, um. Configuration manager. There's an exorbitant amount of built-in configurations that you can implement to harden endpoints. The problem is these are largely not enabled by default. An out-of-box experience for endpoints is that they're a honeypot waiting to get breached. Now, ThreatLocker's Configuration Manager lets you access common configuration policies across all your systems, thereby removing the potential gaps attackers love to exploit. So in addition to having a zero trust setup, you also can have access to security hardening. The old defense in depth strategy. See? Broad security concepts come in handy after all. Threat locker detect. Now, when I said zero trust is proactive, well, we have EDR. Endpoint detection and response is reactive. Naturally, having a product that does both is preferable. A one-stop shop for protection on both fronts. Now, if you've never written a detection rule, they can get pretty complicated, but Threat Locker has you covered. There is a community tab that gives you access to pre-written detection rules with a stamp of approval for commonly seen threats. And with this Threat Locker Detect module, you can also add on their managed detection and response service, which adds thousands of threat detection signals on Threat Locker's end with real humans constantly sniffing out unusual behaviors or anomalies in your endpoints logs. With Threat Locker Detect and their MDR service, suspicious activity triggers immediately. We're talking an average of 60 seconds here. That's crazy fast. AI can't even compete with that. Now, of course, there's a couple more modules. Web control gives you access to blocking certain sites that are put into categories, pre-built, created, and constantly updated by the Threat Locker team. You don't want people browsing to weapon sites on their company device? Blocked. Easy as that. Now, lastly, they also have this neat feature, the Microsoft 365 integration. If you've ever dealt with whitelisting IP addresses to allow people to sign in from and blacklisting the rest, you'll know it's difficult to maintain the list. IPs are constantly changing, but essentially what it does is that it leverages Microsoft's name location feature. If a person signs in from a device that has the Threat Locker agent on it, either a computer or a mobile device with the Threat Locker MDS agent on it, that IP is added to a list of known approved IPs. If bad guy tries to sign in with a stolen session token using a man in the middle attack that is very commonly seen, it won't work because only the IPs on the whitelist are allowed to sign in. A pretty neat bonus feature since phishing is still one of the largest attack vectors. Now, to wrap up, traditional antivirus software or EDR that we see these days essentially is just like screaming, hey, something bad happened. I might have blocked some of it, probably not all of it, but you should check out this alert. <laughs> but by then, it's usually too late. Zero trust with Threat Locker means that threats never get a foothold to begin with. It's the difference between catching a robber in your house at 2 a.m. versus stopping them from getting into your neighborhood in the first place. Remember all those ransomware stories in the news? Those could have been prevented with Threat Locker's application allow listing alone. That malicious payload hidden in the phishing email won't even execute. No matter how many times people try to click that malicious document, Threat Locker is just gonna yell at them and say, no. Not today. Threats evolve daily. 
hourly even, zero day attacks, fileless malware, and ransomware as a service have made traditional reactive approaches not enough. Threat Locker and the zero trust approach allows you to keep up with the ever evolving threat landscape by ensuring only trusted applications and processes run. If it's not explicitly allowed, it's blocked. End of story. The world isn't slowing down and neither are cyber threats. It's time to embrace zero trust with ThreatLocker. Secure your network proactively while maintaining your sanity and stop living in fear for the next breach. Because in a zombie apocalypse, you don't wanna just survive, you wanna thrive. You need to be ready. So check out ThreatLocker in the link down below for a free trial if you're interested in learning more about zero trust. Because in cybersecurity, trust no one, verify everything, and never ever let your guard down. Oh,